Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, DCYF Employees Governor's Office expresses concern over new Deputy Director. Let's Take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Starting your next career in world-class manufacturing with Pitco in Bowdoin, Hampshire, a leader in the design and manufacturing of commercial cooking equipment. We are seeking assemblers to join our team. We offer competitive wages and exceptional benefits packages and have openings now. Visit us at pitco.com slash careers to apply. I was pretty shocked. Um, I immediately, you know, remembered the reports on the arrest. These women who do not want to be identified say they're shocked by the promotion of Sherry Ermel to DCYF Deputy Director. Brookline police arrested Ermel last November and charged her with domestic violence simple assault. Investigators said she threw a ceramic mug full of water at her wife during an argument. We work with a lot of families that experience domestic violence. Um, you know, people who have been victims of domestic violence. I can't imagine how, how they'll be able to trust us when they know that our organization is, is run by, by someone who, uh, who is apparently, has apparently been involved in that kind of situation. According to court documents, Ermel's case has been placed on file without finding as long as she completes a court order. She must remain on good behavior for 12 months, meaning no felonies or misdemeanors, and she cannot come in contact with the alleged victim. To promote someone that is court ordered not to be around a certain individual, and then is put into a position that is now responsible for hiring. Department of Health and Human Services Commissioner Jeffrey Myers released a statement saying in part, Sherry brings 18 years of child welfare knowledge and experience. Through the years, she has established critical relationships within and outside the agency. Um, we'd like to see there be a conversation about the potential effects this has on, you know, our face in the community, um, on our community partners, and again, on our ability to serve the families that we work with. Now, in a statement, the governor's office says its questions and concerns have been relayed to Commissioner Myers. And we did reach out to Sherry and her lawyer, but our calls were not returned. Live in the newsroom, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Fox with death glare attacks people in Burlington. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Facing a family crisis, you need Servizi and Associates. With over 20 years of experience, we focus exclusively on divorce and family law. You can count on our team to provide personal attention, integrity, and dedication. Bleeding again. The wounds are painful. You can see, like, all the teeth marks on my leg. And the attacker was relentless. I'm just this death glare. It was... Freaky. This bushy-tailed fox struck early this morning on Leopold Street. When it got my calf, it really clamped down. I had to kick it a few times to get it to let go. And for hours today, he roamed Burlington neighborhoods hunting his victims. I turn around, and the fox is right there. I just had to keep beating it with the bat, getting it off me. Marissa Donnelly had hoped to clean out her shed. I was here and he came walking in. Unaware of a sly four-legged stalker who crept right in. I kicked him twice. I kicked him, kicked him again. He hit the wall. And she tripped as she tried to retreat. He got a good jump. I put my other foot on his head. And I'm trying to push down on his head while he has a, a hold of my other foot. The victims are now taking a series of rabies shots to prevent a deadly infection. The bite was painful, very painful. Finally, an officer calmed fears in these neighborhoods. We hear boom, boom, shooting the crazed animal as it lunged toward him. I'm relieved now, now that we know 
you know, he's not lurking around. The threat is gone, but the fright it inflicted will linger for those who came face to face. Terrifying. <laughs> it really was like one of, I was shaking for hours after. Pretty crazy day here in Burlington. That fox is now at a lab where it's being tested, and we should find out tomorrow if indeed it did have rabies. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Parents of 10-year-old boy rescued from river think first responders let's take a listen to the video from wmtw newsweek maine from frank 107.5 and i'm holly and there's over a hundred thousand dollars in this vault with your name on it listen weekday mornings for your chance to win cash with frank's one thousand dollar minutes the bank of frank is open frank 107.5 Steve, well, the parents began by thanking everyone from first responders to medical staff for all of their help, but they say that their work will not be done until they can bring both of their boys home. Like I said, I've never seen a river so angry. A river ate my son. Jason and Helena McFarland had only been living in Auburn for days when their son's 10-year-old Maxim and 5-year-old Valerio went skipping rocks at a park by the river last Tuesday. But in the blink of an eye, they said, their son Valerio had fallen in, his older brother Maxim immediately jumping in to save him, both getting swept away before their father could help. There's no protection. Uh, it's a dangerous place even for an adult. It was an off-duty firefighter who happened to find Maxim later that night, eventually pulling him out of the river before he was life flighted to Maine Med in critical condition. Now, a week later, his parents say his recovery has been nothing short of a miracle. He's alert. He doesn't have any brain damage. Obviously, he took a hit. All of his organs have taken a hit from the, the drowning, but the doctors are expecting him to, to do a full recovery. But with five-year-old Valerio still missing, the heartbroken parents are now turning to the public for help getting closure. We are asking that any and all of those who are able to join us in uh, the search. Saying that after several days of intense searching, the warden service and other crews are simply running out of resources. Their biggest concern, that the five-year-old's body could be swept out to sea. And we want to just be able to recover himself and we can give him a proper burial. Today, the family making their goal moving forward clear, asking that all money donated to online fundraisers in their name be put towards strengthening protections along the river. We don't want this to happen to any other child. Never. Never. And that his <clears throat> death... Is, we don't want it to be for nothing. Extremely close. And Helena McFarland said not only were the two boys extremely close, but she said uh, that the older brother was his little brother's hero and his protector, and she wasn't surprised that he jumped in the river to save his little brother. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And our thoughts and prayers are with the family. Apple will buy back up to a hundred billion worth of shares. Apple on Tuesday announced a plan to return a hundred billion to shareholders in a massive stock buyback confirming, confirming recent op around tax reform. Mueller told Trump's lawyers he could compel president to testify via subpoena. 
Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. From the DNC, a legend of the Trump campaign, WikiLeaks and the Russians, conspired to defeat Hillary Clinton. DNC Chair Tom Perez joins us now from Washington. Mr. Chairman, thank you for joining us this morning. Let me begin with, you know, you surprised a lot of people with the lawsuit and even drew some criticism from Democrats. David Axelrod uh, put out earlier uh, this week, right after you announced the lawsuit, spectacularly ill-timed, a Betsy POTUS strategy of portraying a sober and essential probe as a partisan vendetta. Everyone should chill out and let Mueller do his job. Your response? I have great respect for uh, David Axelrod. I have great respect for uh, Director Mueller. And they can do their job while you have a civil suit pending. Why did we do this now, George? Three reasons. Number one, in order to file a civil suit, you've got to make sure you're filing it within the applicable statute of limitations. I don't know when Director Mueller's investigation is going to end. So we need to file now to protect our rights. Number two, we've done our job. We've done our homework. Over the course of the last year, we have seen story after story, uh, brick after brick in the conspiracy between the Russians and the Trump campaign to affect the outcome of the election. I did my homework. We have a strong case. That's why we brought it. Are and you concerned, three, George? We have to we have to deter misconduct. We've got elections coming up in November. It's hard to win elections when you have interference in elections. And they've done it with impunity, and I'm concerned that it's going to happen again. So that's why we did it now. No concern that it might impact, might interfere with the Mueller investigation? No, I, I worked at the Justice Department for over a dozen years under Republican and Democratic administrations. We have the, our, our justice system has a criminal justice side and a civil justice side. I used to investigate police misconduct uh, allegations. And while we were conducting the criminal proceeding, we invariably had civil suits that were filed, and we were always able to work out protocols so that we wouldn't interfere. Okay, and there you go on part of that video and that report. If you want to watch that whole video, we will share the link with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. Special Counsel Robert Mueller told Donald Trump's legal team directly he could compete appeal the president to testify via a grand jury subponent if Trump declined a potential request for an interview, two sources told ABC News. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.